Good afternoon, folks. How you doing today? Well, I'm out here in the yard. It's not a bad day today. It's a little warm, but not uh, unbearable. And over here on the bench, I don't know if you can see it, on the outdoor workbench here, I've got a box of some electronic uh, paraphernalia and stuff like that that came from my old workshop. And one of my YouTube uh, viewers wanted some mementos from old 64 Go. And he's willing to pay me for my trouble and for, my, for the shipping and so forth. I've already written him back and told him how much it was going to be, and basically I don't want a lot of money. Uh, just to cover my gas, running down to my shop, getting the stuff, getting the tape and taping the eye, the box up and everything, and, you know, basically the cost of the shipping. So let me just show you uh, what um, I got here in this box here um, that I'm going to be sending him. Now I just stuck this uh, stuff in the box up in the workshop. So, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is take out the items that I plan on give, uh, uh, sending him. He just wanted some mementos of old 64 goat because these are items that are eventually are going to go be trashed anyways. This is a, an Argon tape head demagnetizer, the original paperwork. I don't think I've ever used this. I've got this. I don't remember where I got this. I've had it for probably 40 years. And uh, are we in, in view, Tom? No. Okay, a little better view here. Um, tape head demagnetizer I've had for, I'm going to say, has to be uh, 40 years anyways. I have no idea where I got it from. Brand new, never been used, because I've had different kinds. So that was a last minute thing. He wanted a few items. I'm gonna open this box, I'll come back on the video when I get everything out, because I just shoved it all in here in the workshop. I gotta pack the things properly so it doesn't slop around in there. I'm gonna just pull them out for now and then I'll show you the items individually. All right, this, I'll, I'll show you all these things as, uh, as we go along. Okay, box is empty now. All right. <clears throat> The items that he requested, uh, this was hanging on the wall, an old uh, uh, a loop antenna from a, an old radio. He wanted that, so he's got that. He wanted some speakers. Are we in view, Tom? Speak the dude. I don't, it's all right. Am yeah, I? we are down a little bit. Okay. Now we are. Oh, you see, see, can see three speakers here? Okay. Um, these aren't too heavy, so I'm going to send these three to him. They're just typical four and a half. That's a four-inch speaker. This is probably about a four and a half or so. Uh, universal radio and television speakers. Uh, that's the best. I can't send anything big and heavy. It's too costly. Uh, in here... Okay, this is the other item he wanted. He wanted my Ohm's Law calculator. Uh, are we in screen? I'm going to let my son Tommy uh, yeah. make sure I'm in view here. Um, okay, this is the... Um, this was hanging on the door in my workshop, and I use this a lot. All right, so he's getting that. He's also getting this ruler here and I really didn't use it too much it was kind of complicated it's American Radio Relay League um, slide calculator so I'm giving him that I'm gonna get I'm gonna send him my uh, champion spark plug um, chart and you, you, am I in view yeah, mm -hmm. hold it steady now Okay, and uh, this was the chart when I had my 1950 Studebaker Champion in 1964, and the, uh, I think this is 64, no, this is, I'm sorry, this is the 63 Ford Galaxy that I had in 67, uh, and the 223 six-cylinder engine took a Champion 860 spark plug. 
and that's down here in the corner. I'm just sending in, you know, he wanted some mementos of the old 64 goat. You can have that. Uh, some miscellaneous um, places I've ordered schematics from and so forth. This, this was hanging in my workshop when I lived in New Haven in the cellar in 1959. This was hanging on the wall of my workshop. And this is, I still feel the same way today as I did when I bought this. There is one of these at every bar. How true that is. Okay, here is uh, coax data, like RG8, RG58, all the impedance and the losses. And here's a, a, a magazine I had, uh, electronic servicing. He's going to get that. These are things that were go are going to be thrown away anyways. So, send in that. that. This is a, um, this is some of my stationery. I don't know if you can see that or not. Up here. Don't get too close. We're good for 10 inches. That's it. Okay, that's my stationery I used to use um, back then because uh, when I was working, you had to almost do one of these numbers uh, on the back side of your boss, and I wouldn't do it, you know. So, anyways, this here circuit is the switching circuit for my 71 Ford Econoline van, and um, it was the switch off alarm, switch on and off door switches and alarms are uh, on each of the doors in the van so that if I wanted a uh, certain part of the van to be alarmed and another part not alarmed for whatever reasons I can do that and that was the circuit for it it's just something I threw together um, Dale Electronics this is just old stuff I had laying around no it's easy to send this stuff and just put it in an envelope uh, Motorola HEP transistors, uh, PNP, different transistors that I used to get for an experimentation years ago. Um, Olson Electronics. So this is um, this goes back to the uh, early 60s. Olson Electronics in uh, Akron, Ohio. Uh, what we used to do um, is order stuff from uh, Olson Electronics back in the uh, days years ago. Okay, so you can't probably see that too well there. That's scotch tape down here. Can't save everything, so I'll give it to uh, um, uh, Lowell is his name that I'm sending it to. Um, old 64 goat. All right, what we got here uh, is a low-pass filter uh, for a center channel on a stereo and I got bad eyesight and I don't have my magnifying glass wait a minute let me look at this here okay uh, you t left and right channel 500,000 ohm resistor going in to a network of point ones here and 22k resistors here a point two two over here and um, I think that's a one meg control here, and that goes into the um, base amp. I mean, um, yeah, the the amp that you're going to use for the base. So uh, you'd pick off your um, left and right channels, and that'd be the center base. I I made this uh, to use in a car, I think. Whether I ever did or not, I don't know. But anyways, you can have that. Um, 1976 Sylvania Receiving Tube Price Guide, uh, Price uh, List. I think I used to be able to read this without a magnifying glass, and I can't hardly even read it with this 2X magnifier here. Okay, over here, uh, there's a phase shift audio oscillator, 800 cycle for oscillation. Uh, this is the oscillator I made for the automatic slide unit that Cool Blue Lights, Dan now has, 
Uh, it's that blue thing you might have seen in the um, in one of my earlier videos when I was showing it up in the shop. It had that amplifier with the blue vinyl case to it and the speaker system and so forth. Well, that amplifier had a, uh, a left and right channel. It was a stereo amplifier, and what it ha what it did is your narration was on the um, either the left or the right, I don't remember, and your automatic 800 cycle pulse that operated the relay, which in turn kicked the slide, advanced the slide projector. So this was the circuit for generating that 800 cycle pulse. I picked 800 cycles because there's less after here on the crosstalk on the tape. We used to use cassettes uh, because if you record a thousand cycles, it was uh, you can hear it, and you can just barely hear the 800 cycles. I probably could have used a lower frequency, but anyways, that's the circuit for it, for what it's worth. Uh, this one here is one of my noisemakers. This is a light-controlled noisemaker. Dan Kublu Lights would probably like this, but you know, you know, uh, stuff is buried up in the shop, and I'm finding this stuff as I go along. What would happen is it would it would squeal. It's a squealer, you know, and it was at such a frequency that you couldn't tell where it was coming from. And it would not go on in the daytime if light was hitting it. But at night, when they had a photo cell, it would start squealing. And the photo cell was... Hmm, I think I used a Motorola... No, a GE FET1, F-E-T-1, or a Motorola HEP801, I think, is what I used in here. Been too long. Is the uh, bipolar power supply, which is uh, three volts, three volts uh, center tapped, six total, um, and it had a photo cell and a crystal uh, squealer, and here's the oscillator circuit for it. Okay. Uh, let's see this. This is a schematic of a uh, turkey call. This isn't my design. This is a circuit out of a magazine. Are you recording this, Tom? Yeah. Okay. You're looking the other way here, and it could be off camera. Uh, I didn't design this circuit. This came out of a book. Uh, this one I designed, uh, what it is, is a hotel um, sound system matchbox to plug in. Uh, well, at that time, we used to use cassettes to give you background music in a hotel system where they use the, uh, oh, I can't think of those name of those plugs now, the three-prong plugs that they use, the entertainers use, um, that three prongs on them. I can't think of them now, what they called it. It escapes me. It's a standard, standard plug, and they had the jacks in the wall. Uh, for it. I, I, I can't think of what they call them plugs now, but anyways. Um, here is a, um, this is another circuit of the Matchbox. Your phono input here, in case you want to play records to it, and so forth. I'm, I'm spending a lot of time on here, but uh, these are just stuff I had on a clipboard. This is one of my shockers. Um, used uh, one, two, two transistors, and uh, what it is, it used uh, a one and a half to three volts up here. It used a um, PNP NPN configuration, 0.1 capacitor, step up transformer, approximately a hundred volt pulse pulse outside. This is a, oh, a shocker, a little tingler. Um, this is a flasher. This is a flasher circuit. Now this came out of the Radio Shack, page 22 of the Radio Shack magazine. I just copied the schematic so I can read it. Um, here is an original list price schedule of a two, two price list for 1975. Another calculator and Lastly, well, before we get to that, a um, circuit breaker cross-reference guide. And lastly, my Howdy Doody poster that I had on my attic ceiling. 
and it's nothing more than just something I printed off the internet and blew it up and it's pixelated and everything else but just for the heck of it I did it so that's that's the stuff that I'm going to send them and I'm going to have to support these speakers uh, so they don't slide around and so forth okay what I am going to do here is I'm going to protect these speakers with a, some cardboard and that's all you always do that you protect the speakers from damage so the first thing we're going to do we mark the holes where we're going to uh, put the supports to hold them in let me see if this thing's going to reach there let me use this All right, Tommy had to leave. Um, what I'm doing is I'm just marking the holes here, and we're going to do is take some uh, cable ties, and we're just going to pull them through here. And all that's going to do is just protect the uh, speaker cones, and then we'll slide it back into the box here, along with all this stuff here that I'm going to be uh, putting back in this envelope here. So. Um, the total weight of this uh, right now, I had it weighed, is four pounds, but I uh, it would have cost $21 to send it to uh, oh, uh, Oregon, which, where uh, Lowell lives, and uh, I figured if we get a priority mailbox, it'll be $12.85 or $12.35, something like that anyways. You know, it's a... Uh one of the reasons why I don't like this ship stuff is because it's so much work. You know, to you know, you want the stuff to arrive in good shape. So that way, you know, nothing's going to happen to the cone. You don't want to knock holes in. Whenever you move a speaker, you always, always, always tie it down. Okay, I've got all the speakers secured now, so they're not going to go anywhere. And then I'll put newspapers around them to protect them. Now, speakers are tricky to ship. You have to be very careful with them and moving them. You always put a big piece of cardboard or a plywood in front of a large speaker. You don't want to knock a hole in a cone of a speaker. That's a heartbreak. All right, so I'm going to pack this stuff up now. And we won't do that on camera. So uh, we'll be getting this ready. So we'll probably get this out maybe Monday afternoon or maybe Tuesday because Monday morning I gotta go for a colonoscopy again so thank you for watching folks and have a good day